The other type of bone formation or ossification is endochondral ossification. This is the model where cartilage is being replaced by bone. So inside the cartilage, ossification occurs. And this happens around the same time point, right? So beginning at eight weeks post-conception um, and occurs to all the bones in the body besides the skull and clavicle. Use this, this method of bone formation. So let's look at this in detail. Here is an overview of endochondral ossification. And here we're starting post-conception, nine weeks and going through month three, birth, and then childhood to adolescence is gonna be where growth is going to continue to occur. So early in development, um, there is not bone, it's all hyaline cartilage. So it's a hyaline cartilage model. That's the endochondral ossification that where the name comes from. So at this time point, there is, um, the bones are growing. And what's happening is the chondrocytes that make up the hyaline cartilage are enlarging and dividing. In the middle here, this is going to become a primary ossification center. The first place, the primary place where ossification is going to occur. It occurs there because as the bone starts to lengthen because of the dividing chondrocytes, the cartilage here in the middle, the chondrocytes themselves start to die. Um, and that's because they, they no longer have nutrients um, available to them. The cartilage is getting too big, the organ, this little bone organ. So chondrocytes start to die really in that primary ossification center. When they die um, around that time, blood vessels begin to invade. That's here. So the blood vessels invade. That is important for a couple of reasons. One, bone is vascular. So this makes sense. We have to have blood vessels be there. But these blood vessels also bring in calcium and osteogenic cells. Osteogenic cells are going to develop into osteoblasts. And now we've got a way to form bone. So spongy bone forms in this primary ossification center. Um, this process continues as the cartilage continues to degenerate kind of along this direction. Um, the, so the older cartilage, so this cartilage is older than this cartilage because the bone's growing that way. So I'll put that up here. The older cartilage and the chondrocytes within it um, is going to calcify. Those chondrocytes die and continue then to leave space for osteoblasts to lay down their matrix, which is bone. Um, osteoblasts are going to invade, migrating upwards. And forming bone. So they don't, chondrocytes don't turn into osteoblasts. They are invaded, taken over, replaced by um, osteoblasts. This model is called the cartilage replacement model because you're replacing cartilage with bone. Um, the cartilage is kind of like a scaffold that exists, and bone then can replace it. So as new bone is added, the shaft lengthens um, and eventually we also have this secondary ossification center in the epiphyses. So remember this whole region here is the diaphysis that has been elongating. Um, these secondary ossification centers form in the epiphyses that the same thing that happens that there to form um, the blood vessels invading and forming 
bone from that pre-existing cartilage that was in the diaphyses, um, epiphyses. So the epiphyses actually ossify separately. Learn how to say that really fast. Epiphyses, I can't do it. Okay. Um, so the other thing you'll notice here is this hollow cavity that is beginning to form here, this label here, and it's here. Our medullary cavity is um, has been formed because of how the osteoblasts migrate to the ends. Um, and then we're going to have continued bone growth through adolescence by a very similar process that I will show separately, but show this process of chondrocytes enlarging, dividing, and being invaded by osteoblasts. That's what's happening with this whole model. We're gonna see that kind of zoom into it with bone growth.